Here we are back in studio, this time for the latest member of our Extreme Networks family, Extreme Cloud SD-WAN. And with me in studio, I have my good friend, David Stuck. Hi there, Isaac. Welcome Hi to there, the Welcome series, David. It's Thank been a while. You. No, it's an absolute pleasure. Looking forward to it. So the last time we did this, we were recording in your kitchen. We were. Uh, shared by my two dogs. I think they were well-behaved. Yes. Yogi and Bertie. Oh, yes. Yogi and Bertie. Well, there you go. Yogi yeah. and Bertie. So this time we got no dogs, but we're here to talk about Extreme Cloud uh, SD-WAN. And David is going to do the teaching on this one. He's been doing a lot of teaching for the uh, internal engineers and uh, our external partners as well. Yep. And uh, he's a great teacher. And there would nobody better, really, to come in and do this. Oh, so, welcome. Yeah, no, looking forward to it, Isaac. Looking forward to it. Tell us a little bit about SD-WAN. What are we going to be you know, learning about? What's this product called, SD-WAN? We're going to really cover the whole story, starting very much with the why SD-WAN. And uh, we'll certainly define it, of course, and we'll expand on that definition in episode one. And then we'll gradually uh, work through the anatomy. And then finally, we'll look actually uh, in a fair bit of detail at the Extreme Cloud SD-WAN solution itself. Um, we'll start with the why, why SD-WAN, and then we move on and look at the hows and the specifics of the product itself. It's a, it's a great story. Oh. And I must, uh, mustn't forget, of course, we'll do a demo. Ah, yes. Um, for those watching the Welcome Series or familiar with the Welcome Series, mm -hmm. we always try and have a statement right up front in episode one sure. that kind of defines, you know, uh, in, in a short sentence, what, uh, what the technologies that we're talking about are. For those who are not very technically literate, how would they explain SD-WAN? What's, what's a you know, one-liner that will tell people this is what it is? It's one of the most effective ways of managing the relationship between probably the most important stakeholder involved here, which is people like you and I, namely the users of applications and their relationship to those applications. Of course, increasingly, where are these applications? They're up in the cloud. How do you get to the cloud? You've got to use the wide area network. So it's managing how users get to those applications so they get the very, very best experience. I suppose, uh, you know, uh, a successful deployment of this technology are the smiles that you put on users' faces. For those watching uh, and are familiar with Welcome Series, at the end of the series, we will have an exam that mm -hmm. you can go and take, which will give you the associate, associate level certification, uh, completely free, but that'll come later. So, you ready? Yeah, absolutely. Let's go for it. Let's go. So the why. Why SD-WAN? Now SD-WAN stands for Software Defined Wide Area Network. It's a technology that makes it easier to manage and optimize the way data travels over the wide area networks, the WANs, which connect, of course, different locations such as offices, branches, remote workers, data centers, and of course, cloud services. Now, in simple terms, SD-WAN is a, is a bit like a GPS, a, a global positioning system or, or a sat-nav system. That helps us navigate when we're traveling between two points across some kind of transport network. But this time, it's for helping navigate application traffic across a data network. Like modern sat-nav, this is especially important when there are changing conditions. Now, just as a GPS system helps us drivers choose the fastest and most efficient route to reach our destination, SD-WAN can help data traffic choose the best way to travel over a WAN based on factors such as network conditions, available bandwidth, and the business importance or criticality of the application. Now this results in faster, more reliable and more secure connections and a better overall experience for users and people accessing applications and services over the WAN, the internet and of course the cloud. Now to better understand the reason why SD-WAN is so important today, it's important to consider some of the current narratives and paradigms.
So let's start with some key narratives. There's an acronym first coined by Gardner, SMAC, that refers to a collection of digital transformation technologies where we take analog processes and make them digital, are often used together to create modern digital applications and services, and it stands for social, mobile, analytics, and cloud. To this, today, you could also add the Internet of Things, or IoT, so it's more of a smacky stack. Now, social, well, that refers to the use of social media platforms and tools to engage with customers and users and to facilitate sharing and collaboration. Whereas mobile, well, that refers to the use of mobile devices, such as smartphones, tablets, as the primary platform for accessing digital services and applications. Analytics, well, that refers to the use of data analytics and business intelligence tools to extract insights and value from the large and complex data sets. And cloud, well, that refers to the use of cloud computing platforms and the infrastructure to host and deliver digital services and applications without the need for on-premise hardware or software. And finally, IoT is a, is a network of interconnected physical devices, vehicles, buildings and other objects embedded with sensor software and internet connectivity. This system allows these devices to collect, exchange and analyse data in real time, enabling smart applications and automation across various industries. Now, IoT can enhance efficiency, improve decision making, facilitates remote monitoring and control, ultimately transforming the way we live, work and interact with the environment. Together, this smacky stack narrative describes a powerful set of capabilities for businesses and organisations to deliver innovative, scalable, cost effective digital solutions that can drive growth and competitive advantage. Put simply, it makes us all quicker and slicker at achieving our objectives, namely to communicate, collaborate and be productive. Now, another narrative is the application economy, which has significant implications for the ordinary person, as it has fundamentally changed the way we live, work and interact with the world. In the application economy, we have access to a wide range of services and products through mobile and social apps, which makes it easier and more convenient to do things like, I don't know, shop, communicate, manage finances, access healthcare, even find transportation. Now, this has led to increased efficiency, increased productivity, as well as greater convenience and accessibility for people from all walks of life. The app economy has been fuelled by the widespread adoption of smartphones, tablets and other mobile devices which allow us to access and use apps anytime, anywhere. Now, Application Quality of Experience, or QOE, is the overall subjective perception or satisfaction of the quality of a software application. It takes into account various factors that can affect the user's experience, such as uh, response time, speed, reliability, the ease of use of the application and its functionality. Now just think about GPS or, or SatNav. Just 10 years ago, it did a really good job of directing you to your destination by the best route. In other words, back then, the shortest route. It didn't take into account pinch points, changing quality of service conditions, security risks, speed cameras, etc. It was kind of naive, kind of innocent. Its key performance indicator, its KPI, was what's that shortest route? What's not to like? Hmm, well, the world's moved on. QOE is used to measure and ultimately improve the quality of applications, particularly for digital services and applications that rely on high performance and real-time delivery. QOE can be affected by a wide range of factors, including network conditions, server performance, <laughs> software bugs, and the behavior of you and me, the user. Now, we can also use QOE metrics to set benchmarks for application performance and to make informed decisions about investments in technology and infrastructure. QOE is a key factor in ensuring the success 
of digital applications and services as it directly impacts the user's perception of the value and usefulness of the software. Now users may use shadow IT, you know, technology solutions and services that are used without the knowledge or approval of the organization's IT department. And they'll do that for a variety of reasons. Let's look at some of them. You know, it's often quick and a, an easy solution to address a specific need without having to go through the laborious and formal process of requesting IT support or approval. Users may need a specific tool or service to perform their job more efficiently, but the IT department may not have the same level of knowledge or, to be honest, interest in that tool. And IT departments can often be slow to respond to user requests or, or may lack the necessary resources to address all of them, which can lead to frustration and therefore a willingness for the user to try alternative solutions. Also, IT departments may enforce strict policies on technology usage that limit a user's ability to use certain tools, services and applications, which can lead to users seeking out alternatives. Now, users may perceive that the tools or services they have found on their own are of higher quality and provide a, a better user experience than those provided by the organization's IT department. And they're probably right. Be honest. Most of us use the shadow IT. Not always, of course. After all, we're not bad people, but sometimes we do. You know, when it's right to do so, especially when we rely on IT to make our number, to be more productive, be able to engage and collaborate more effectively. Sure, let's go raise a troubleshooting ticket to the IT chaps, uh, or, or maybe just complain to our boss or, or to our peers. They're your choices, after all, as an empowered user. Or maybe, yes, why not simply enable yourself? After all, there's an extraordinary choice of consumer-orientated IT and apps that are available. OK, let's agree. Users use Shadow IT because they feel that it meets their needs better than the solutions provided by the organization's IT department. And they believe that the benefits of using these alternative solutions outweigh any potential risks. Well, Shadow IT can create security risks and other challenges for organizations, particularly lack of visibility, which is why it's important for IT departments to work closely with users to understand their needs and provide appropriate solutions that meet both the user's needs and the organization's security and compliance requirements. Now, DTI, or direct internet access, and backhauling are two different methods for connecting a branch office or a remote site or users to the internet and to their important cloud services and applications. DTI provides a direct connection from the branch office to the internet and it bypasses the company's main data center or HQ. Now this means that traffic from the branch office goes directly to the internet, doesn't pass through the company's network infrastructure. And this is typically used when the branch office has high speed, reliable internet connectivity and, and requires a high level of bandwidth for applications such as video conferencing, cloud-based services and other data intensive activities. Now backhauling on the other hand, well this involves routing traffic from the branch office back to the company's data center or the HQ before it reaches the internet. Now, this method is typically used when the branch office traffic needs to be monitored or filtered, maybe for security or compliance purposes. Well, the advantage of DTI over backhauling is primarily related to performance, user experience and cost. It often results in faster internet speeds and reduced latency or delay. Now, by leveraging the branch office's existing internet connection, Companies can avoid the costs associated with backhauling the traffic to the data center or HQ and the need to maintain multiple internet connections. However, it's important to note that DTI may not be suitable in all use cases. Backhauling might be able to provide additional security and control, particularly for sensitive data or maybe compliance requirements. And may be necessary in certain situations, you know, such as 
Healthcare or banking, there are obvious examples. It's important to evaluate the specific needs of the business when deciding whether or when to use DTI or backhauling. <laughs> it's most likely most businesses require both approaches.